Ready? Cool. OK, welcome, everybody. Uh, I think the last session of the day, unless you're going to join us for the birds of a feather session at 6, which you probably just should, because it's the CDM MVPs all together, some folks from the product team answering all your questions. It, it's an open session, so come and join us for the birds of a feather if you're still up for some more system center knowledge. Um, hope you like the music up front. Wanted to make sure everybody's comfortable. If you're sitting in the back, you might want to come sit in front a bit because I chose to run off my backup videos today. Um, the internet connection is too slow to do the live demos. Uh, so I'm not able to zoom in. Uh, it's a good picture you'll get. But sitting in the back, you'll hear my story, maybe not see everything. So scoop in a bit if you want to. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Maarten Goed. I'm a system center MVP from the Netherlands. Been so for a few years. Um, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. I have some updates I'll post about network monitoring and storage monitoring in the next few days. And I'm here to entertain you for the next couple, well, hour, couple of minutes in uh, storage and network monitoring with System Center 2012 Operations Manager. And I think it's a big subject. Every time I talk to OM admins, it's one of those things where you ask, like, what can I do with network monitoring? What can't they do? How about to make sure that I monitor storage? Uh, and those are the things I'm going to tell you about, but also show you uh, again in the backup videos. But you at least see it working in the environment I, uh, I do have live, but not connected today. So again, thank you and welcome. Before we start off, who's using System Center 2012 Operations Manager today? Wow, that's, that's a big number of hands already. So good for you guys. Uh, if you're not on 2012, you might want to upgrade, because network monitoring is one of those pieces that's native in the product now. So that's the thing I'm going to show today. Who's already using network monitoring with Operations Manager 2012 today? OK, still a good number of hands. Who's monitoring storage today? That's even less hands. So OK, I'm, I'm guessing that'll be the subject you're interested about as well, like how should I do that, how to approach, and uh, what can we actually do from the product? So the agenda for the session is, Talking a bit about operations manager level setting, uh, the room on, on what we have to deliver, and then deep dive into the fabric. I want to make sure we tell you about network monitoring in detail, how it works, how you discover, how processing works, uh, even bits about licensing. Those are questions I get, right? Like, do I need to pay for this, or just, can I just use it? Storage monitoring, some dashboards to really surface the information, make sure we see the network, we see the storage and all the other items. And one of the things you might want to consider is capacity management. Because you'll have storage monitoring, you'll have network monitoring. You can look back, but you want to look forward. Um, how, how much storage do I need to add? Am I still able to uh, suffice in the next 90 days? So we'll talk about capacity management and then summarize. And if we have some time left, we'll do Q&A. But again, I might shorten it a bit, because there's a great bird of a feather at 6 you can join us for as well. So. Again, welcome. Let's talk a bit about Operations Manager. You guys know everything probably about Operations Manager, but the key point I want to address is that we want to provide 360 degrees of monitoring. We want to make sure you monitor fabric. We want to make sure you start monitoring the applications on top of that, but also want to make sure you monitor the end user experience. And we want to do that through a consistent experience. So through a console or a set of consoles that you're familiar with and see the whole 360 degrees of your environment and make sure that we know of outage, how to circumvent, uh, if it's impacting the user, which storage cabinets in a network, et cetera. So there are a few layers of infrastructure monitoring, application monitoring, and user experience that we'll be monitoring and providing in a UX. And those are the things I'll show in the dashboards on how to pull them together to give you this service oriented view and make sure you see the service as a whole. Now, if you look at some of the key items in Operations Manager, these are things that we do, right? We have synthetic transactions. These are used to really simulate what the user is doing, what the application is doing, and make sure that we know the end user perspective. We have the DevOps integration, so we know that we can pass off an event to the developer to look at or the other way around. We have .NET monitoring with APM. Uh, lots of sessions on that this week. We have the dashboard framework. Um, that's something new in OM 2012, right, where you can have dashboard frameworks. We have widgets. And we'll show one of the new widgets to do capacity management with. 
We have the management packs that really deliver on the promise of monitoring. So we have network management packs, storage management packs, and all those. And we can do cloud monitoring. But the thing I really want to talk about, of course, uh, are how do we monitor the fabric? And I want to start off with network monitoring. Now, if you look at the network monitoring features we have in Operations Manager 2012 out of the box, uh, we have discovery. So we find your devices. Uh, we'll have a look at what the device is, the key characteristics. We'll have a look at ports and all these things, find them. And then, of course, start monitoring them uh, for availability, for performance, uh, and in depth uh, if your device supports it. We actually provide dashboards out of the box, and I'll show you these, but I'll also show you how to create your own dashboards. And we have some reporting. Not to be underestimated, you want to made, maybe report on longer periods of time, then you'll need the data warehouse, and of course you need reports, and those are the things you get out of the box. We also do server to network dependency discovery, so we want to make sure that we know which server is connected to which network piece, so you see again the 360 degrees. And we support loads of vendors. Uh, we have over 80 vendors certified. We have over 2,000 devices certified. And there's actually a list on the Microsoft website you can go to. And I have a link later on in the slide deck so you can download it and find an Excel sheet that Microsoft published on the devices we support and make sure that you uh, know that your device is supported. Or I'll tell you in the slide deck what to do um, if your device is not supported. We have multi-protocol support. Um, not too sure about SNMP v1 anymore. I don't think a lot of companies use it anymore, but maybe in your data center there's another sensor you want to monitor on like fire or water or something else in your data center that might talk SNMP v1. We support it, of course. We support v2, um, of course, and then v3, which is one of the new standards a lot of the companies are adopting. And we can do that over IPv4 or either over IPv6, which is quite neat. OM 2012 on Windows Server 2012 actually supports IPv6, and we will support uh, discovering and monitoring over IPv6 if you actually would like to do so. Now, the devices we support, um, this is not an authoritative list, but just to give you an ID of the devices you could monitor for Operations Manager, we'd have support for bridges, load balancers, switches, of course, firewalls, routers, hubs, and on the right-hand side, you actually see hosts and virtual devices. And we'll come back to that in a second. But we do provide um, network monitoring for virtual networks, as you know, from Hyper-V 2012 and VMM 2012. And I'll show you about the integration uh, and the fact that you can do monitor your virtual switches and your virtual ports. Now, the first phase is discovery. We need to find your devices, um, edit with the right credentials, make sure we discover the components, and then step into monitoring, of course. And if you look at discovery, uh, what is discovered? We find, of course, the key components of a device, so ports, interfaces, processors, memory, what have you. And again, that's if it's a supported device. We find connectivity, so let's say switch to switch connectivity, and I'll actually show you in a minute in a demo. Server to switch, um, and in the virtual networking, you'll actually see VMs hooked up to a virtual switch. We find VLAN membership, well, depending on the equipment, of course, but the major vendors, we will. If it's a Cisco, it's a H, it could be an HSRP group, which is high availability group, for instance. Um, we find those. We find the members. We actually create the relationship so they can have a roll-up if all the members of your high availability group are available and responding. And we're stitching uh, the switch ports to the server NIC so you get a visual representation um, of that environment of course, dependent on the fact that you're monitoring that server. Otherwise, we can't stitch one plus two. So how about the discovery methods? We have actually two options for you. And we, the explicit discovery is where you actually know about your environment. So you have a list of your devices. Uh, you know their IP addresses. You know their SNMP uh, strings, the read strings. Uh, and you're going to go through the wizard, either add them manually add them through a list, but at least you know about your environment. And we're going to discover based on the input you provided. But we can also do recursive discovery. It might be that your network topology is unknown. Uh, we do need to know a few seed devices. So maybe your backend switch or a backbone switch. You know about that type of device, how to access it. And from there, we'll actually start grabbing the ARP and IP tables 
and go out to the next switch and the next switch and the next device and start querying them and making sure we find the network topology um, and start plotting your topology. So both methods can be used, uh, mix and match. Um, it's up to you whether you're going to use the one or the other. Uh, it'll lead up to the same effect. We'll find your devices and start monitoring them. Uh, but you have a choice uh, of both. Now, when running discovery, there are three stages we'll do it in. First is the initial probing. We want to make sure we can actually access the device if it's responding. Uh, then go into the second stage, processing. And I'll show you what we do there. Once we finish up with processing, we actually go to post-processing where we do things like the port stitching. And we'll walk to, through these three phases and show you in detail what we're doing there. First, the initial probing. We send an initial ICMP and or SNMP request to find the system. And I say and or because you, of course, need to have SNMP enabled for us to really query the device. But you might have um, the ping replies, the ICMP disabled, or your network admin might. So you can do SNMP only, but by default, we do both. In the processing, we find all the components. We start querying for those components, and we create the topology for that device or for the multiple devices. And then in post-processing, we actually start putting all the devices together, do port stitching, and finishing up. Now, if you look at the first phase where we do the ICMP ping and or the SNMP get, it actually uses V2 by default. So if you want to do V1, you need to set it. If you want to do V3, you actually need to set it. Then we go about, we do an ICMP ping. Again, that's if you enabled, left the default. We'll do an ICMP ping. Responding, yes. We'll go to SNMP get. See if we can get to the device, get the basic infrastructure response. If we don't get a response, we'll actually go to pending. And I'll show you a few events in a second so you know what to follow and how to see. It might that you uh, didn't enter the read string correct or whatever happened. We put it in pending, and you need to resolve it, rerun the discovery, and it'll actually show up. If V2 fails, we'll actually try V1. Um, again, if you want to do V3, you need to set it specifically. So that's initial probing. If we look at the request, uh, you see that the OIDs are registered under a certain namespace. You can look it up in the slide, 1361211, which actually defines the common MIB variables um, as defined by the standards body. And on the right-hand side, you actually see an example where we use uh, a packet sniffer to see the request operations manager doing. It says we're using version 1, certain community string. We do the GET request, and we query for these five variables to get the basic infrastructure. Again, if it fails, we'll go to pending management. You need to resolve it, get the access right, and we'll rerun the discovery to get that right. If you map this to, for instance, a Cisco, a Cisco Catalyst 4506, that's where we created the uh, packet sniffer on, and this is the request you'll be having. You'll actually see that we get in there, we query for the sys contact, the sys location, the sys name, the sys description, and sys object, and it returns things like Cisco Internetwork Systems, uh, Catalyst 4506, the location 43-1217, etc. So these are the things we query for the device response, and we actually close off the initial probing so we know, hey, this is a Cisco 4506. Now we go into the second stage where we do the processing. We get that object ID of the system, and we actually match it to a config file on the management server because we want to know if we support the device. It's not that we're not going to do anything if we don't support it, but if we know about the device, we know the types of ports, the type of components that live on this device that we need to query for, get status back from, put into Operations Manager for monitoring so we know about how to start the rest of the discovery. So we match it up to files that are called uh, config files in a directory called OID2 type on the management server. And we'll place them for you with the installation. It gets upgraded with SP1, and in the future, it'll get upgraded so we support more devices, of course, going forward. We get the details. We know about the 4506. We say, hey, these are the ports we need to query for. We'll get the IP addresses, VLANs, resources, what have you. We'll identify the device type because a router is different from a switch, et cetera. We need to know what type of device is it. Maybe monitoring will apply differently. We need to know about the vendor, the model, so we actually get some information back from that. And also what discovery probes to use. 
So what are the classes we'll start to monitor after the discovery and start raising those in operations manager. And then at the end of that initial processing, we actually know if this device is certified, which means we know about the characteristics of the device. We'll actually start monitoring for those specifics or whether it's generic and we'll just do the basic stuff because we don't really know about the device just yet. So in the post-processing, the third phase, we create layer two and layer three connectivity between the devices in the topology. We do port stitching, again, physical and virtual. You need to have an agent on the box you're monitoring. You need to add the network equipment, but better together, we actually stitch them based on IP and MAC address received from, of course, both devices. We remove some MAC access points that don't belong in the topology. We create network connections to represent the, wi the wide area network or some logical connections and we create all the other connections to show you this map, uh, this spider web, if you will, of your network and I'll show you that in a demo on what you actually get to see uh, from the device. Now what are the events you actually want to look for in the operations manager management server while discovery and while these three phases occur so you can actually follow whether or not your device gets found and uh, whether or not all the right details will be monitored. Now these are things you can find, of course, in the operations manager event log on the server, but to make it easy for you, we actually have a view under operations manager, the operations manager management pack called network discovery progress events, which will nicely show up these events. It's actually filtered for them, so just go to that view, start of the discovery, and you can actually see whether or not it's progressing. And if you have a big network or you're doing rediscovery, it might help to understand what's going on. So the first event will be full discovery started. We do the initial one. We clear the whole topology. Then we actually have cleared the first initial probing phase. With 12, 1 to 7, we actually go into the next phase. We'll go about finding this specific device, um, finding the IP address, probing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we do the post-processing. We start the post-processing. 1207, we complete it, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the events you want to look out for. And again, if it fails, we'll alert on some of these key events, but this is just for um, OM admins, I guess, to follow the process going about. So that concludes discovery. We ran to the discovery. The device has been discovered, key components. We know about the device. Then we need to start monitoring. That, of course, happens automatically. We have support for resource pools, which is, again, a new feature in Operations Manager 2012. You might want to group a set of management servers together, which will do the network monitoring. Uh, maybe multiple management servers, so you have high availability, but you do need to make sure that all these management servers can access those devices from their logical network, of course. If you have specific devices, like in a DMZ or in maybe a customer domain, you can actually pick management servers or gateways to do the monitoring for you, and you might use a different resource pool for that. The network devices itself are discovered from a base class called system.networkmanagementnode. And if you look at the console, you'll actually see a class with a description called network node. Only certain ports will be monitored by default. If you look at a discovery, you look at a discovered device, it might show healthy. You do a diagram view and go like, hey, there are only a few ports that are now monitored. Some are unmonitored, some are monitored. We will only monitor uh, ports by default if they're connected to something. We've, and the connected to something is only, will only recognize that if there's an agent on the other side. So if this is a port on a switch, we have a server on the other side, whether it's a virtual machine or a physical, it needs to have an agent so we understand, hey, this is the device we know about, it's being monitored and we'll flip the switch and it starts monitoring by default. Um, if it's not monitored, you can enable port monitoring. Um, go to a task on the right-hand side which says enable port monitoring and it'll just flip on. You could override that setting as well so it always monitors all ports. But what we want to do is reduce some noise so we don't want to flip everything on by default. We want to make sure it just enables for the ports that we really care about. And again, we define that by these two points. So what do we do for all of our devices? So whether it's generic or a specific device, whether it's supported or not supported, these are the monitors and rules you get out of the box. So we'll do an ICMP ping. We want to make sure that it's just available by pinging it. 
We do an SNMP ping, which is again like an SNMP get to see that we can actually access the port and access it through SNMP. So those are the monitors, and I'll give you an alert um, if they fail. There are some rules, like the ping response time, uh, for instance, for perf charts, so you want to graph the response times for over latency, etc. cetera. Um, trap received, like a warm start. Some of the devices actually support that they will trap an event if they get booted, so you know, hey, the device has been rebooted, and I want to confirm if, uh, if that's actually meant or not meant. Things like warm start, cold start, and we have things like the, the rediscovery uh, that we want to alert you about. Now, for certified devices, so the devices we know about found in this OID2 type files, we actually monitor things like port and interface. We want to mo monitor things like up and down, which could be an operational status. It's just down because somebody unplugged. We also want to alert you if somebody puts it down administratively. Volumes, so that's a perf thing. We want to show you the inbound and outbound traffic. If things like bytes through, maybe number of packets dropped, etc. We have utilization, discards, errors, all these things we show you on port level. On processor, we show you the percentage utilization. Might want to make sure it's not on 80 or 90 percent. For memory, we show things like in-depth memory counters, but it's a Cisco-only feature. Um, and we might be adding that in the future, but for now, it's Cisco-only. Uh, for in-depth memory counters on usage, um, for the, all the other certified devices, we do free memory. So we show you how much memory the device has left. We look at connection health. So we show you whether or not the connection is going and give you an alert on that. VLAN health, so number of um, nodes in that group and show you if they're all healthy and if not, turn the VLAN to red and show you which device is not responding. Same goes for HSRP groups. Again, that's a Cisco feature, high availability, where we want to show you all the endpoint, all the devices that are actually playing in that high availability group and alert you if any of those will be going down. Now, if you look at one example, and this I took from the Cisco, the 4506 I was monitoring, these are a few of the monitors and rules you get. You get, for instance, free memory, show you if it drops below a certain level. Again, you can override that. Memory pool fragmentation, processor utilization. We have some rules, largest free buffer percentage, free memory percentage for the memory pool, and of course the processor utilization, so you can nicely graph the processor of that device. Again, this is for certified devices. This is for Cisco specifically, but we support a large number of devices, and depending on the device, you might get other monitors and rules. You can have a look beforehand, of course, through the authoring section, but uh, these are a few that you would uh, get out of the box. Now, the monitoring itself, um, you can look up uh, through the properties, see which OID we're using, um, what the settings is, are that you can override. Uh, and again, through authoring, you can, use, you can set that up front if you want to tune that a bit. So what's new in SP1? Um, is everybody using SP1 that's using OM2012? Good. OK, we're on CU2. Um, want to make sure that you get that roll up on there. New in SP1 is new devices. Again, we update the management servers with SP1. We get the new config files. We support more devices, so might be newer devices you want to add or just the breadth of devices we support. Here's the link. If you want to have that Excel sheet, know whether your devices are supported, you can actually go there and um, look at the list. Now, if you want to submit a device, there's actually a specific link there as well for you to submit a device for Microsoft to have a look at and certify it and maybe provide in a new roll-up so that you get that monitoring as well. New in SP1 is also the connection with Operations Manager with regards to the virtual networking. We had the Operations Manager connection, of course, flowing in all these VMs and all these other states and objects, but we're now flowing in the virtual network. You get the virtual switch, you get the virtual ports. We do the port stitching. Again, this is SP1 feature set, so if you want to have this, let's go with SP1. With that, we get some new dashboards. You want to show the vicinity dashboard for that virtual network, and you might want to have a look at the virtual node, uh, let's say, of that virtual switch and see all the traffic flowing through there. These are the dashboards you get with SP1 uh, new as well. So let's have a look. And again, my apologies for running a video, but I'll narrate so it's near, li near live. I'll switch to my PC in a second. 
One second, guys. There we go. Four. Yep, should be showing up. Okay. Let's roll with network monitoring. Again, you need to come up if you can't see it. Um, I'm first going to go to the operations manager integration with VMM. I'm in the VMM console. I'm in the system center settings, operations manager server. You might already have it enabled. Just want to make sure everybody knows about this. We're running a connection to operations manager to a secondary management server in our lab. We have everything connected. Uh, it's connected for all the VM information, but it also flows the virtual network and all the management packs on the operations manager side are actually added, so we get that information back to OM. Now, the thing you might want to do to test if the connection is working and maybe you want to have an update of the information is you can use a PowerShell command that's called write SC Ops Manager Connection, which will real-time just push the information from VMM to OM. Normally, if VMM has a state change, it will push it on the fly as if it or a notification to, through that connector to OM. But you can certainly use the commandlet to force it or just see whether or not the connection is working because that's mandatory to see the virtual networking piece and want to make sure we get that information in. Now, if we're doing the storage monitoring in a second, we also need this connection, so we want to make sure this connection is right. If we go to the operations manager console, um, we go to the monitoring pane. That is this virtual machine manager section uh, we get with the connector because these management packs are loaded. Uh, we have the VMs, we have the application health, we have the cloud health, we have all these things uh, we can show. Um, but we also have the host view of the Hyper-V host in our environment. In my case, there are about six hosts. ST2 is the host I'll be using for this demo. Um, and there are some alerts associated at the moment, like it's exceeding a certain memory utilization. It's at 81%, but that's fine. We're going to have a look at the virtual networking and not at the memory at this point in time. If you look at ST2 on the right-hand side, you have a task which is new in SP1. It's called the virtual vicinity dashboard um, and the virtual node dashboard. So what we'll do is we'll go to the, no to the vicinity dashboard and it'll draw this spider web, if you will, of um, the host and the virtual switch associated. In this case, I call the switch the converged net switch. And you see it lives on the ST2. And on that switch, you can actually click on the node dashboard. And we deep dive into this virtual switch and see the vicinity view from the switch's perspective. So we see the VMs, in essence, that's connected. We see some instance details on the right-hand side and the health of the interfaces below that. And you see it nicely showing up like a spider web connection. You can zoom in and see which virtual machines are responding and see some of the states back. And of course, also the host is connected to the virtual switch. And this is good info. And this is a default dashboard view. And we'll show you in a minute how you can create your own dashboards and really complement the view for deep dive. On the below, we see the interfaces, which are the virtual ports on the switch corresponding to the VM. And you can actually see, for instance, the throughput. So I can navigate through a performance view and graph out these performance lines like I would for physical networks and physical ports. So in this case, bytes received. So that's good. Now, this is virtual networking. Um, in the beginning, we talked about discovery. And I want to show you a bit about how discovery works. Again, the discovery is done from the operations manager console. So we'll go back to the operations manager console, clean this up a bit, and go to administration, because that's the section we'll do the discovery from. And we go to the network div uh, discovery methods. I actually have two. Um, I have a few HP switches, a few Cisco, other equipment I'm adding to my environment. So I have two management servers uh, corresponding with those discoveries. This is my HP switches, and we'll go through the wizard to show you quickly. It's already configured to use a certain server, a certain resource pool. In this case, I'm using the all management servers resource pool, but you can create your own. If you want to create a custom pool, handpick a few management servers or gateway servers, you're fine. Uh, just make sure all these servers are able to talk to the devices they're going to monitor. Now, I'll just use the, the default pool for now for demo's sake. Go to the discovery method. Explicit, we know about the list. Hand input it, make a list. Recursive discovery we can use, but then we need to use that seed device to look at the Mac art table and go about. Of course, we need the read strings. If we're going to use SNMP, we need to know the read string, reach out. I've input the read string. I can create one and saying, hey, my switches. Type in a community string. 
And at the end of the wizard, it actually prompts you if you want to distribute this run as account to all these management servers so they know the credentials to connect to. If you won't use the wizard in this uh, way, just distribute the run as account yourself. I'm using two devices, 192.168.11 and the 12. And I set it to SNMP because I've actually disabled the ping reply, so it won't work otherwise. V1 or V2, again, V2 by default, V1 as a fallback, V3 I need to select explicitly. Um, advanced discovery is more like retry attempt, the timeouts uh, before we actually set it to pending, but we'll leave it default for now. And we can actually schedule the discovery because devices might change. You might want to do a rediscovery every week, month, and if you're really brave, every night. Uh, but it will actually cause for the devices to get updated in Operations Manager. So I've run these beforehand. You see the devices I have in my environment, uh, a Cisco PIX, a router, a switch, AP switch. And if I look at the properties, you actually see this is an HP 2824 we're connecting to in our lab that's running with live data so we can actually perf a few things. So we go back to monitoring. There's a new view called Network Devices, Network Monitoring. And within that, there's a state view, network devices. And we see the devices I've just added. It found them, didn't have to do anything, just found the HP switch. We see the details again of that switch below. And from here, we can actually go to a diagram view to see what did it find. So we'll open up the diagram view, have a look at the switch. It found 51 objects below that switch. And again, there are some things not monitored because it's not connecting to anything, so we don't care. Port 1 is connected, port 10, 2, you see a few ports. We see it also start monitoring the ports. Um, and on the not monitored side, we see the ports that are not monitored. And if we click on one of the ports, you'll actually see on the right-hand side that you can enable port monitoring if you want to override that setting and get that going. Now, if you look at the Health Explorer, um, we can have a look at the monitors, for instance, that we get from this device. So we'll filter it out, we have a look at availability, Look at SNMP ping, things like performance, what have you. Uh, those are the things we monitor. If you go to a port, we can actually go to Health Explorer again, look at some of the monitors. We get interfaces flapping as one of the descriptions, interface status, and you get nice alerts when those fail and you know what to do. Again, these are out of the box. Um, if you want to create your own monitors, that's fine as well. As long as you know the OID, have some authoring experience, you can add monitors to the types of classes we'll be using here. Now, if I go to a performance view of one of the ports, you see all the things that are collected. So inbound packets, outbound packets, and we'll have a look at the outbound bits per second, and you see data coming in. Um, depending on scale, depending on time, you see data flowing in. You can create your own per graphs and get a bit of an understanding of the performance of your network. Now, we can also run the network node dashboard from here. So we want to zoom in on this particular switch, get a bit of an overview of the switch and what's happening here, right? Want to see the vicinity view, what's this switch connected to. Uh, Want to see the average availability, things like the instance details, average response time. And we actually see that it found that it's connected to a secondary HP switch. So it finds the other switch, it finds the ports it's connected on. It actually will show you the status of the connection. We can actually have a property look on the line and say, hey, port 21 is connected to port 21 on the other switch. So we know physically how ports are connected in this case through an Ethernet cable. We only have five ports that really have cables plugged into it, port 1, 10, 2, 20, 1, and 9, and we monitor those. And in the node dashboard, you can see those. And if you want to go brave and do some reports, look at a year's worth of data or such, you can just do the reporting engine from here. Uh, select the object, in this case a port number, and just start monitoring uh, or showing a report from here. So I'll say port. We'll find port 21, which has some data on it. You can just add it, not a problem, and then set all the things you would do normally in a report. So trend it from this year, previous month, and just get some understanding of this month's performance over, in our case, the wide area network um, connection. So that's going well. So that's a report we can just schedule, export, have some fun with so we know um, what capacity to buy from our uh, network vendor. OK, so that's, I guess, the demo for network monitoring for now. And I'll switch back to this.
network monitoring, licensing, one of those things you hear a lot about, right? Do I need to have a management license for every network device I will monitor from my infrastructure? In essence, no. If it's just a device that's sole purpose is to transmit uh, data, not running any Windows Server, not doing any other task and just transmitting that data in one shape, waveform, or capacity, then you don't need a license. If it's a more intelligent device, like an SMTP gateway or proxy server, like a NAS, um, it might run software on there, other tasks, other workloads that it'll provide. You do need a management license, but in general, your router switches, everything you'll normally add in your environment, you don't need a management license for, so you covered that. So that's a good thing. It's out of the box, so you're good with network monitoring. So we got network monitoring covered. Uh, we'll have a look uh, beside the out-of-the-box dashboards. We'll have a look at the other dashboards in a second. But I want to get to storage monitoring. It's one of those things that we can have a look at the network, Hyper-V, the VMs, everything. But we also want to have a look at the storage and what are the options I have there. Well, there are two. You might have your storage added to VMM. And I guess with all the sessions going out this week, you know about the fact that VMM supports storage. We connect with that like file servers. We connect with iSCSI targets. We connect with SMIS enabled devices. And we get information from those devices and work with them from VMM. Now, this is the information we also get pushed from VMM to OM. And it's new in SP1. So we actually get that information to OM. The other method, of course, being is just using management packs. Uh, connecting to NetApp, HP, all the devices from the management pack that the, the vendor actually provides. And it might go through SNMP, it might, might use another means, but it will connect to the storage and give you some detailed information. And I'll show you both. I'm actually using a NetApp simulator in my lab, so I'll show you both methods uh, in a second. Now, the integration with VMM, again, is on the connector, so make sure the connector is working. Um, one of the neat things, we actually have alerts for thin provisioning. Uh, it's one of those things with iSCSI and what have you that we can actually thin provision. In VMM, there's a column near storage that says it's thin provisioned or not, and we can give you a signal ahead of time that it's running out of uh, available capacity. And again, we give you some dashboards on historical capacity utilization and also identify which VMs are affected by capacity exhaustion. The storage management packs, um, I think there are a few levels to it, right? You want to make sure you see the real device, so the cabinet, the disks, the volume, the filers, whatever. We also want to have a look at the file systems on top of that. Uh, and we want to have a look at the file systems on Windows and understand things like, how does my iSCSI target working? We want to really have a 360 degrees there as well, so we see all the points that could break where storage becomes unavailable. So we use the file server management pack from Microsoft. We could use the HP, IBM, Dell, what have you, NetApp management pack. We can use third-party vendors like Oplogix to give you an insight into certain storage devices. And you could author your own. Uh, if you're really brave, get out the authoring console and start making sure you monitor your own storage if it's not supported. Or just bring up your vendor because, to my personal feeling, we need to have management packs for all the devices. And if they don't have it, they should come out with one real soon. So back to the demo. Again, it's going to be a video for a second. There we go. We're back in the environment. We're going to open up the VMM console. Uh, we're going to have a look at the fabric. We're here in the fabric space. Normally, we see things like the servers, the networking, but we also have storage. I have three providers in my environment. I have the NetApp provider, which is actually talking to my NetApp storage. And I have two iSCSI providers. And have a look at the arrays. I get a 7 gig array from my NetApp, and I get a 5 terabyte array from my host. And in this case, you can see the NetApp is giving me three pools, which are aggregates in NetApp's world. We see the total capacity. We actually classified them in VMM for certain types of storage. I call them bronze, silver, and gold. And on the silver, you find uh, an aggregate, but also the iSCSI targets. And if you see on the right-hand side, the last column is called the provisioning type. In this case, it's fixed, but it could be a thin provisioned LUN available to us. And again, we get that information. And in VMM, we already get the basic information. Um, and we can connect our file servers. 
with Hyper-V 2012, you might want to consider using SMB V3 to really uh, use your VMs over file shares. Those are the file shares you add, and we get them back, of course, to Operations Manager. If we go to the Operations Manager console, uh, first thing, we'll go to Virtual Machine Manager view again, see what we get out of the box through the connection. We go to um, the Managed Resources, the Storage Pool Health, and we'll find the storage pools available to us, the iSCSI target, the three aggregates I got from NetApp. We'll have a look at the diagram view for storage, and we found that the target is available. It's in warning at the moment. Certain ID, total capacity, capacity used, uh, other things we get as attributes from this instance, but we can also open up the Health Explorer. And from the Health Explorer, have a look at why is it a warning? Well, actually, the cause is that the available capacity is under a certain threshold, and if we look at the state change, it actually says the storage pool usage is 89, and the threshold is at 85. You could override that or just add some extra capacity, of course. We can also have a look at the performance view to see what the total capacity was, have a look at the used capacity and get a bit of an understanding of where we're going. And in a minute, I'll show you a capacity management view, so we can actually trend and forecast on this, but this view, of course, is about looking back on the storage we used and the filling up of the volume. Now the other thing to look at are the Microsoft management packs, for instance, for file servers. So I'm running a 2012 environment here. We'll have a look at the alert first. There's, again, the alert showing us that the storage pool usage is at 89. You can just acknowledge that alert, and we should be good. The environment I'm using is Windows Server 2012. Um, I'm using some file services on there. And there's a proper server file on iSCSI management pack for 2012 you can use. There's a subfolder called iSCSI target, and it'll show you all the iSCSI target it found. In my case, I was using the ST2 um, to connect to my NetApp. So this gives me a view whether or not the iSCSI target provider is actually healthy, um, because the storage might be working, but if the provider's not there, that's not really going to fly. So this manager pack is a good one to have in your environment, so you can actually watch the iSCSI targets and see how they work. You can query it, start it from here, and those will show up, of course, in the Ops Manager alert if they were to fail. Now, if you look at the Windows Server base management pack, there are a few neat views you get out of the box. Things like the CSV health, but also the disk capacity, of course. We find the logical disks on physical servers, on virtual machines. We can have an understanding of those volumes, in this case, for instance, on my Hyper-V host, and see how the C or D volume is doing, and get an understanding of the monitors that were running on top of there. For instance, for corruption of the file system, so we know whether or not the storage is working, whether or not the file system is healthy, and whether or not it's corrupted, or maybe even the free space we want to monitor from the VM or the physical server perspective, um, and get a bit of an alert if, uh, if things like disk queue length will, uh, will clog up. Now, if you look at the performance view from the Windows Server base management pack, you also get the base capacity, but with the performance views, you just pick one of those uh, volumes, select the counter percentage free space, for instance, and start graphing the free space performance of that certain volume on a VM on our physical disk. Now, let's dive into a bit of NetApp storage monitoring. Again, I'm using an emulator. I don't have a storage cabinet, but it's an emulator you can download from the web if you want to play around with it. I'm running it on a Linux box um, just to give you a bit of insight on how I'm running it. Uh, it's a SUSE Linux uh, machine that you can actually monitor from OM, of course. On top of that uh, SUSE Linux VM, I'm actually running the simulator. It's called RunSim, and you can see here that it's actually running uh, under a certain process number called 6755. If I return to that screen, we can actually log into the NetApp and get a bit of an understanding on how things are going. Log into the ONTAP software, which is the operating system to NetApp, of course, and you can run your regular commands. So have a status of the aggregates, so the raw storage available on top of the disks. Uh, get a bit of an understanding how they're doing. Three aggregates, RAID 0, RAID 4, 4. Everything is online. We can have a look at the volume status get a bit of an understanding of the volumes on top of the aggregate. Um, well, created, available. Um, and we can open up, for instance, Internet Explorer and go to the NetApp device 
and get a look at the NetApp admin page to see how the device is responding. And again, you would do the same thing for your physical devices if you have those in your environment. But I'm using the simulator. Um, again, have a look at the volumes, uh, the aggregates, and have an understanding of the storage we allocated per volume and per aggregate. So this is what we prepared and what I'm going to monitor. Now, what I did ahead of time is I actually added the NetApp management pack to my environment. It's available from the website or get it from your account rep. Um, I had to add the device through SNMP. It's one of the prerequisites for the management pack, but it really depends on the management pack how to go about. So I added the NetApp filer simulator as an SNMP device and then imported the NetApp management pack. It shows up as a folder called data on tap. And if you expand the data on tap, you see two subfolders, the storage systems, and one which gives you perspective from the virtualization. And there it finds all the key components. So it finds the controller, which is in essence the bridgehead of the device, gives you a bit of an understanding on the IOs and IPs and all the things of your device. We find the volumes. Uh, and the aggregates, of course, that we have in our environment, they show up the same way they have in the filer view or through the command line. We get monitoring for those. We find the volumes, volume 0, volume 1, volume 2. Uh, we see the percentage used, so we get an understanding there. And then, of course, it also populates a diagram view. So you can actually see the controller, the aggregates, and expand it all the way out to the volumes that's under there and get an understanding of the machine and the storage that it's providing. From there, we can, of course, also go to the performance views. Uh, it has a bit of a performance view. It collects things like uh, the CPU utilization, the I.O. operations, the I.O. throughput. It does things like latency collection. Now, in my simulator, of course, there's not really traffic. I'm not really doing any file copies at the moment, but you get a bit of an understanding that it will collect those performance metrics. It will alert you on there, or you might want to graph that to have an understanding of the load uh, that the storage is actually generating. So you get that out of the box. It also has reports. Um, the NetApp management pack is real nice. It has some reports. They actually have some advanced reports like storage efficiency uh, and give you availability reports, LUN average latency, most common alerts. So these are good reports to use and get an understanding of the storage environment and how it's performing. Okay. <clears throat> that was network monitoring. Or storage monitoring. Good call. It's late. It's past 5 p.m. Sorry. <coughs> So we have the basic infrastructure in. We're looking at network devices. We're looking at storage devices. You might have your VMs in, everything. But we wanted to get to the 360 degrees view of monitoring. And one of the key aspects, of course, is to have some dashboarding, really an understanding of how components work together. And the best way to do is just visualize those, right? You want to make sure, like you saw with the spider web, how a device is connected, how are they doing, get a state. And you have a few options there. We have some neat dashboards in the product. You saw that. We have a new dashboard framework. You get them out of the box. But essentially, you have three options. You have those you get out of the box. There's a Visio and SharePoint alternative, where you take Visio, create your Visio diagram, have the operations manager add-in that's available to Visio, then create those, attach statuses to your diagram, and publish it to SharePoint, which has the Visio services, and then plot that as well a semi-live dashboard. And then you have the Savision Live Maps. They're actually on the show floor. And that's one I'll show you to give you an understanding of how far you could go with the visualization of your network monitoring. Now, we talked of the out-of-the-box networks, uh, network dashboards. Uh, the ones you get is the network summary, uh, which gives you an all-up of the whole network, uh, like the vicinity view, some of the key metrics, key devices. We have the network node dashboard. Like we saw, we can zoom in on one device, get this overview of this one device we're interested in, uh, and zoom in on that. We have an out-of-the-box dashboard for network interface. We can zoom into an interface and get some particular information about that. And we have the vicinity view. I call it a spider web view. Show you the information of that device, that network, that environment, and be able to do that. We have those reports, so memory utilization, we have processor utilization, port traffic volume, port error analysis, and port packet analysis you'll get out of the box with reporting. 
Here are some of the samples, so the network summary dashboard. We have the vicinity network node dashboard. Vicinity with both physical and virtual switches combined in one view, depending on your network, of course. We have the virtual network showing up in Operations Manager, like we saw. We have the virtual networks with VM switch, and of course the virtual networks from the vicinity view, as I showed you in the demo. So one step extra was, were to be creating those Visio and SharePoint diagrams, and they're real nice. You can take Visio 2010 or higher, SharePoint 2010 or higher, and again, like you see here, create a Visio diagram, attach statuses from them, uh, and publish them to SharePoint. Um, it, you define that connection from SharePoint to OM, so you can just use the role-based security for SharePoint to allow somebody to look at this diagram. It can be rendered as Silverlight or as uh, uh, GIF files, so you can uh, more or less see it on any device. The only uh, downside is the maintainability. If your network changes, you need to reattach statuses, drag maybe elements around. Uh, those are the things that you might be busy with when updating these diagrams. So there's an, another alternative. Like we said, Savision has a product called Live Maps, which actually extends the out-of-the-box functionality of Operations Manager and gives you ways of visually, visualizing the information. Uh, it might be that you want to show the regions you're operating under, do a drill down into the country, maybe into the state, on the data center you're operating from, and drill down all the way to the rack, to the network, or maybe create like a service-oriented dashboard where you go from a certain region, AD services, um, domain controllers, and then the four things that you care about on a domain controller. And let me give you an idea of what you could do with the networking piece with Savision Live Maps combined. Go back to the video, back to the environment, and we'll start off with Operations Manager. Go to monitoring, and I've prepared a few dashboards up front, one of them being the HP dashboard. And what I wanted to do is give you an overview, and this is one I prepared up front, of the system, actually the blade system, that I'm running on top of my networking. These are the blades. You can have a look at the blade status, uh, all the instance details, and get an understanding of all the status of the blades, the slots they're in. And we can return to the dashboard and do the same thing for the backside of the uh, blade and see, hey, the power supplies, the fans, but also the virtual connects, right? All the networking that HP provides in this blade chassis to my hosts and to my virtual machines. So I can have an understanding, and this is based on the HP management pack and the dashboards out of live maps. But I can also create a more detailed dashboard for, for instance, the two switches I'm monitoring. Take a physical representation of the switch, map the statuses of the switch ports on top of there, draw that line, and really zoom in from here on the status and give you an understanding of, for instance, again, the network node behind this device and return to the normal views with an operations manager. Now, this is a neat way of really showing you connectivity and an understanding for everybody in the environment on how networking is doing. From here, we can just right-click and go into any other um, dashboard. Same thing for storage. You could create a NetApp overview um, dashboard. Draw a certain map that shows you the volumes, the iSCSI target, the filer, the disks associated. Associate the health with it and just have an all-up overview at a glance of how the environment's doing, or maybe map the VMs like here and have an understanding of how the high availability is taken care of between filers and get an all-up understanding on the host that's talking to the filer and see again the uh, alert about the host memory utilization and at a glance, 360, understand the environment. Now, how do you create these dashboards? I've created a Visio up front, exported it as a PNG file, so a graphics file. We go into the Live Maps authoring tool provided by Servision, of course, and you actually go into the folder of Operations Manager where you want to create the dashboard. Say, I want to create a map, for instance. Um, go through the wizard, select the map I want to use. I want to use my own image. In this case, I want to show the converged infrastructure um, that I have running on these HP blades. Give it a name, for instance, converged network, finish. It starts adding the view to Operations Manager. 
you get that on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, I can actually pick and choose the objects and the states I want to map on top of this dashboard. So what I'll do is I actually want to show the interconnect states of those HP blades on top of this dashboard. I go to add a class and I select the class that I want to add, in this case the HP blade system, interconnect bay. Select that class and on the left hand side, it actually starts showing up the instances that I have. And I have more blade systems than one, so it'll show up like a couple of. So we'll take the blade system interconnect, we'll drag it to the map, uh, get rid of some of the icons and some of the labels, so we can just drag the state. And we can actually put it on the map we created and do this for every piece and every component in our environment and finish up the map, of course. And then after that, save it. It saves it up to Operations Manager. Everybody with an OM console in your environment can use it. So if you return to OM console to have a look, you'll just see the same map presented in Operations Manager. OK. So, oh, that's Vincent. Well, we don't really have a second, do we, at the moment? We're in the middle of a session. I'll give him a bit of an answer here. Actually, Vincent, I'm quite busy at the moment, so we don't want to worry about him. Um, or do we? Oh, it's quite urgent. Um, we actually need to uh, take care of some capacity, I'm hearing, because we're breaching the stock trader SLA, possibly. Can Ops Manage actually forecast some of these items? Well, yes, I think we actually do. So, yes, we can do that. Um, given the urgency, I'll set them up right now. Okay, good. Always good to have Link. Be in contact with your fellows. Capacity management in Operations Manager. I call it the fifth dimension, because if you look at Operations Manager out of the box, you get availability monitoring, you get performance, you get uh, configuration and security monitoring. But really, you want to do capacity, right? You want to trend, forecast, see how the volume is going, storage growth, network throughput, whatever. Uh, and that's looking forward. If you're looking at performance views, you're always looking backwards. So you might need to do that manually to start understanding. Well, if you look at capacity management and uh, how um, it's defined, it's actually a process used to manage IT. And its primary goal is to ensure that we have, in the current and future, uh, the right uh, capacity to meet the business requirements in a cost-effective manner. Um, and if you look at ITIL or the Microsoft Operations Framework, there are three levels at which you can do it, right? You can do it at the business uh, level, uh, taking in business requirements, the number of orders uh, or accounts in a certain database. Um, not really something you'll be doing in OM, uh, likely. Service capacity having a look at the whole service, the 360, and then decomposing, looking at all the components and rolling it up. And of course, component capacity management. And components is taking that disk, that filer, that storage cabinet, and having a look at that specific fabric element and doing capacity management on that. That's what we want to do, and that's what I want to show you today um, in this. Now, if you look at the current views, like I said, performance views, it'll show you some performance graphs. Um, and in this example, if you have a look, it's, yeah, it's quite steady. If you have a look at it, you go like, well, it's not really declining, not really growing as well. It should be good for the next couple of days, months, right? Now, what you want to do from a capacity management perspective is start trending that. Use a mathem mathematical method to just see whether it's declining or not. We'll be using a linear trend line in here. We'll be adding some extra time to it so we can extra uh, show you in the future how that trend line is growing, and then set some thresholds, right? You want to make sure what's my warning threshold, what's my critical threshold before we run out of capacity so you can actually add it in the next few days. And then the system should calculate whether or not it's breaching that threshold and give you a number like, hey, there's maybe potentially 70 days left. That's something I'd like to show you in Operations Manager 2012. Here we go. Back to capacity management. I'm in the OM console again. I'm in a folder called capacity management, and we'll create a new dashboard view. We'll say we'll create a dashboard, and we'll use the grid layout. This is out of the box. We'll say Hyper-V capacity. Pick a layout. 
Uh, let's do a three cell. Uh, pick the order you want to have the cells in, click next. And this is just standard, right? You can add any widget, you get this empty framework. You can add per view, state views, but we want to add a capacity view. So we click to add a widget. I've gone ahead of type and imported the OpsLogix capacity management pack. Add the capacity widget, hit next. Say we want to give it a name. Disk capacity would be the first one. We pick the object, of course, that we want to trend on. In our case, the PCI ST2, which was the Hyper-V host. Um, look that up through the object picker. It'll show you the instance in a second. We pick that one, OK. And then go to the perf count we want to trend on. So we select that. Say we want to do the logical disk. So it filters out all the performance counters this one has. Say logical disk. The counter we'll use is percentage free space and total for this host. That's the thing we want to trend on. Next. What are the thresholds we want to set? Well, percentage would be critical, would be 10% in the next 90 days, for instance. 20% would be warning in the next 90 days. And we're descending towards our threshold, so we just set that. We hit next. Date range. Maybe we want to plot it from starting January 1st or another date. Um, use the date picker, say Jan 1st. 30 days, we want to display in the widget. We can go back and forth in the widget. That's not a problem. So we can have a look. It creates a visualization, does the calculation on the fly, and it should show up in the widget in a second. And it's actually going to be healthy. Um, I have enough disk capacity, so it'll just say healthy, and we can just have a look at how this is going. Might want to add memory. So we add another widget. We say if we want to use the capacity widget again, we can complement it with any other widget to make it, make it an all-up dashboard. But we'll say capacity, memory capacity. Again, memory for that ST2 host. So we'll go to the object picker, say ST2. Select that object. There we go. Select the performance counter. Again, it filters. So we take memory. We take available M bytes. We take that one next. Available M bytes, we'd like to say 4 gig memory in that host would be critical. Um, 6 gig memory would already be a warning in 90 days, so we set it to 4,000 and 6,000 because it's M bytes, again, descending towards our threshold. So depending on the perf count, we might to set one number or the other. Trend it starting January 1st again. 30 days showing in the widget. And then saying next. Again, we'll close off the widget. It'll calculate it on the fly and give you an idea of the memory that we'll have available in the next three months. And if we look at the memory capacity, it's actually interesting because it's going to run out of memory in the next 35 days. So we want to swap that out, make that a big screen. We actually have state views and alert views behind this, so you can create them in your dashboards. But it gives you a real, real neat idea of where we're going. And we also have some out-of-the-box um, views, for instance, for Hyper-V, uh, where we take the hosts, uh, we calculate the most important counters, uh, give you an all-up ID of the states of your hosts, and you can actually zoom into one of the hosts. And what you'll see is that all my hosts will be fine, except for ST2. Uh, of course, we wanted to show that for demo purposes. And if you, again, zoom in on that memory counter, we see, well, there's uh, 35 days left. Might want to tune it a bit or just start adding memory. Uh, and this is a type of capacity management really easy. You can do to the console framework, mix and match it with live maps, with other views, and get a bit of an understanding of your environment. Again, the fifth dimension to operations manager is what I'm thinking. So to summarize, System Center 2012, especially SP1, gives you quite a comprehensive uh, way of monitoring your fabric, network, storage, all these other elements. SP1, loads of new devices, so you want to be on SP1. The dashboarding, like you saw with the HP devices mapped out, gives you a good idea of how things are going. And use dashboards to represent to your colleagues, to your uh, management, uh, or to yourself, of course. And then capacity management adds another function so we can actually start trending towards the future. Um, this is what I had prepared. wanted to give you a bit of an insight of, uh, of what to do with network and storage monitoring. Uh, we still have a bit of time, so I'll open it up for questions. But before I do, um, we want to hear from you. So 
please complete the evaluation, win prizes, but give me an understanding of what you'd like to see next on TagEd, MMS, other venues, so I can prepare for that. So we love your feedback. Um, and with that, I'd uh, open it up for questions, and uh, thank you for attendance. Question. You mentioned. Is it working? Can you open on the mic? Barely. Yep. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you would give an overview about licensing for the network side. Can you just mention that a little bit? Talk about that. Okay. Perfect. I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question? I was. What kind of licensing is required for monitoring network devices? For network devices. I'm going to take back the slide. I'll put it on screen. Uh, it's up somewhere. Here we go. So actually, the only devices you need to license, and those are not only uh, transmit transmitting data, but also have other functions run running on top of it. So like, I have three examples in my table, like NAS, proxy server, SNTP. You'd need licenses for those. But for 90% of your environments, like network switches, routers, whatever, it'll just be fine and uh, not required. So yeah, OK, good. Other questions? OK. Well, thank you, guys. See you, see you at the birds of a feather at 6, please, if you're still up for some good MVP knowledge. Thank you.